Okay, today we're going to talk about FSX. What is FSX? Well, it's a method for having a shared file system that you can mount from a variety of AWS resources, EC2 instances, but also Lambda and Kubernetes, uh, and also from your on-premise uh, servers and workstations. So you can think of it like EFS, but with a lot more features, a much broader feature set, and a number of different ways to use it. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is FSX for Windows File Server. Uh, this uh, is obviously usable from Windows, but also from Linux and Mac. They both have methods for mounting Windows file shares. It integrates with Active Directory, uh, and it has an additional feature, the FSX File Gateway, which allows you to cache files from FSX. An example of when you might use that is if you've got FSX in AWS and you're, you have workstations on premise, uh, you might use FSX to provide caching to provide fast access to those files so it doesn't have to go all the way back to, F um, to FSX in AWS to get those files every time. As I mentioned, this uses the standard Windows SMB protocol for mounting. The next option is FSX for Lustre. This is pretty specialist, um, really only used in some specific HPC applications, but in HPC applications, it's extremely necessary, which is why AWS offer this. So usable only from Linux. Um, it has a custom POSIX um, method for mounting. It has custom drivers for mounting um, the Lustre file system, which is why it's only usable um, with Linux. Um, I have seen this mentioned in the exam previously, um, although if I remember rightly, I don't think I've ever seen it actually be the right answer. Um, that doesn't mean it won't be though. Um, but as I say, HPC workloads that need Lustre, um, FSX for Lustre is the right answer. For basically anything else, it's the wrong answer. FSX for OpenZFS. So OpenZFS is a file system um, which has a number of advanced features, um, compression, and uh, it does also offer deduplication as well. It's usable from Linux and also Mac, potentially Windows as well. It uses the NFS protocol, um, which I believe needs additional drivers installed in Windows to, to make that work, but it is possible. Um, Linux and Mac support it out the box. The next thing, uh, and again, something I've seen uh, mentioned a few times in the exam, uh, this is an extremely powerful way to use FSX, uh, NetApp ONTAP. So NetApp are a provider of physical SAN solutions um, that are very well respected in the industry. This is a way to get virtualized version of a NetApp device uh, within AWS using FSX uh, for NetApp ONTAP usable from Linux, from Windows, from Mac, from basically anything you can think of, because it supports every protocol under the sun pretty much. SMB, NFS, also iSCSI. It can be integrated with Active Directory, but it doesn't have to be. Um, this solution is great um, if you need deduplication. It offers that. Um, it offers uh, automatic performance scaling. It's uh, something that, although it's kind of a third-party solution, because NetApp are obviously a separate company to AWS, it is something that AWS mentioned in the exam. Normally, they don't mention third-party solutions too much. This, I absolutely have seen it mentioned in the exam, and it's important that you know about NetApp on tap. Um, the main thing to understand here is you need to know what FSX is and what the different options for using it are and when you might use those different options. We've got a nice summary for you here that hopefully uh, will help you understand that. Until next time, enjoy the cloud.